Well, upon arrival in Sudan, about three, you have about three days, according to the to the Sudanese government, that you have to register at the outside their office to let them for all these are for all foreigners that you have to uh, go to and they call it um, I don't know what they call it but it's an office that you have to go all foreigners have to register outside the airport after they come in and I went ahead and did that later on I requested to speak uh, to the Americans that were there because I want to make sure that my my information was being documented well uh, and then a young uh, American guy that was, that was working at the embassy kind of briefly asked me what I was doing there and what my plan was I told him that I came. I, I initially came to visit family and friends, mainly family, and uh, possibly. Uh, and I, I'm trying to take advantage uh, of the business opportunity that that Africa is offering uh, at the time. And uh, he kind of told me that um, the Sudan is. He actually assured me that Sudan is safe and uh, that the crime rate is very low, and there's a uh, great opportunities in the in the economic. Uh, uh, progress in Sudan, and uh, he he uh, convinced me to to try to do business. He, he assured me, and um, and uh, after, after afterwards, I left basically and um, went back to felt very happy that I maybe this could be uh, basically I got the cheat sheet. You know, he did me a favor instead of just roaming around Africa to try to find a country that I could uh, do business in. It took me about three months to get a gender trading license. I was trying to bring things from China or Dubai or. Anything that the the, the, the local venture, um, the, the, the local uh, vendors need, and so at the end of March I traveled to uh, to uh, to UAE to Dubai to go visit what kind of stuff that I can possibly bring from there. I went window shopping. Mm -hmm. So I came back uh, the, uh, when I came back from Sudan around April, the end of uh, around April time. I got a phone call from a family member. And uh, from back home, told me that the, the U.S. embassy is trying to contact me, and uh, and I said, sure, no problem. I went ahead and called. It was around uh, nine o'clock or so in the evening. That that evening it was a Wednesday. So when I called that number, I didn't think anybody would answer because uh, the embassy should be closed around that time. But, but I said, well, not go ahead, give it a try. So uh, the phone rang to a person number. Uh, guy name was David uh, Nordlos. And um, he asked me. Uh, he said, uh, Jonas, we're inviting all the Americans. First, he said, uh, he said, I'm inviting all the Americans to the embassy. Um, and he said to me, he said, you know what's happening tomorrow? I was like, no, not really. He said, you don't know what's happening tomorrow? I said, I don't know. Maybe there's going to be a protest because uh, the locals were not happy with the outcome of the election of President uh, Bashir because he'd been reelected. So he said, yeah. So for that reason, we're inviting all the Americans to come in, and we're going to brief them on where to do or not to be. Uh, in, in, in the capital. I did go ahead to the embassy. They had moved from the, the outside the city. So uh, I went there, I, I called them upon arrival. I was greeted by the same guy that I, that I initially met in December that convinced me to do business in Sudan. And he came out and uh, he, had me, he handed me a, a, a cotton swab. Uh, he said, can you rub your fingers here real quick? And I said, sure, I didn't think much of it because uh, I'm going through security because he's standing by the, by the security uh, clearance section. So I thought maybe they just wanted to you know, clean my fingers before they put it in, uh, in the machines or whatever. I said, sure. And then uh, after I did that, he went ahead and took it and put it in a plastic bag. And I started thinking, I was like, what is he doing, you know? I didn't think much of it, but then I was like, are they looking for some kind of forensic evidence? Or I didn't care because I have nothing to worry about. And they opened the door. I remember I was reading the sign on the door. It says meeting room. I said, "Okay, everything is cool." So I walk in. It's like a small office. There's no Americans. There's nobody but like three chairs and a little table there. So uh, I said, "Okay, no problem." I sat down and um, they said they said behind the they said behind the door. So and then as soon as they sat down, they reached in the back pocket. I mean, in their pocket, they pulled out a, a bag, and they told me that they were the FBI from Portland, Oregon, and they wanted to speak to me. So the minute the minute they said that to me, I, I felt betrayed because, like, um, I mean, uh, why would you tell me to come in? You you're trying to protect me from uh, from uh, so-called problem that's taking place, and then you're gonna try to tell me you wanted to speak to me. So I told him, um, I told him, I don't, I don't want to speak to you guys without a legal representation. Representation. I don't want to speak to you without a lawyer. And immediately they said to me, that's the thing. Um, uh, you cannot have legal representation because your lawyers, 
Black America and you're on the no fly list. So when he said that to me, and I was like thinking like, wait, I'm on the no fly list. I was like, why did you guys let me leave if I was on the no fly list? And then later on, to put me on a no fly list after I leave the country. They, they told me there was a, a case pending in, uh, in in Portland, Oregon, where I was living, and they needed my help. And I and I was kind of surprised. I said, what case is there? Um, and uh, they said, well, we, we can't tell you. You have to accept. Uh, uh, you have to be willing to to, to help us, and uh, and then we can tell you. We don't work like that. They would give me money that I would live a good life. They asked me, don't you love your family? Don't you want to live a good life? You will make good money. Um, you know, work with us. And I made a clear to them. I told them I, I, plan, I don't plan to be an FBI informant or to be an undercover, uh, whatever plan they're trying to do. But I told them if there's any question, if there's anything that I know, you know, uh, I would tell you guys. But as far as like me going into to anybody and trying to be a... Uh, to secretly uh, bring any kind of information that I would not do. They basically, uh, the meeting ended by, um, they wanted to meet to it the next day. So I said okay to them because I just want to get out of that room. But I made it very clear to them that I have no intention to ever work with them or to work for them. So they wanted to meet the next day. I said, sure, I didn't mind. But uh, as soon as I got out, uh, I, I, I left, I went home. I con and they told me not to contact my family members or don't tell anybody about the meeting that I had with them. So in his body, so they Spotty, so no one could uh, discourage me, you know, to, to uh, with the offer that they were given. And so what I did is, um, the next day I called him, like he told me to call him at nine o'clock, and I told him, he said, okay, oh, whenever you want to get back home, uh, come to the embassy and and, and ask for help. They help me try to get back home. And so like I felt that like it was already a threat that you know the only way for me to get back home was, um, you know, to be uh, an informant or in whatever they want me to do. I said, okay, thank you, and I hung up the so phone. I felt like I was uh, being followed. By, lo by local uh, Sudanese uh, secret services. Everywhere I go, I would see the same people. They would be asking about me, and you know, at the local restaurant I, I would attend, in, uh, in that person, uh, the, 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 the restaurant person would tell me, that individual right over there was asking about you yesterday, and he said, this is a met. So, and because it was a normal knock, so I tried to ignore it, and knock a few times, and I can hear people screaming, what are you doing in there? Open the door. They asked me for my ID. I refused to give in to their demands until I know who they were. I told them I'm an American. I need to speak to my uh, my my ambassador because they came to detain me. I realized they were searching the house up and down, and uh, um, they got very upset. They told me you are in the UAE. You are not in America. Where's your ID? And so um, I gave them my ID. To be honest with you, I thought I was getting kidnapped because they were wearing regular uh, traditional. Uh, UAE clothes with and um, finally I gave them my passport and my local ID and from there they should have known that I have I'm legally living in there and he said to me this guy he said look he said your your government doesn't care about you you are in our hands now you do what we tell you to do you can get out here as soon as possible otherwise you're gonna be sitting here for years and years to come and your government will never ever find you and um and he told me to lie down on the floor and he started beating me on my sole feet and that was the most painful part because um, there's hardly a muscle on my sole feet to, to bear the beating with uh, with some water hose and sticks and the kicking and the punching. And so I said, okay, what do you guys want? And uh, he said, he told me, uh, give me give me the password to all your email accounts. I gave them my Yahoo and my Hotmail. I didn't really care I was in there. Um, and then he just asked me to give him a detailed uh story of my life from the time that I was born, where I live, and up to my, and where I did, and where I went to school, and all this stuff up to now. And I told him, look, this has nothing to do with what you guys want, so why you guys are asking me this kind of uh, question, tell me about what I did in this country, if I violate, if I violate your rules, then, then you have the right to ask, but you have no business about where I'm from, what I do, and, and uh, about my education history. And they would beat me again. And I said, okay. So I sat there and told them from the time that I was born, as much as I can remember, and until then. And then, um, and then eventually, the, once that, that was finished, they asked me. They start asking me the same questions uh, that the that the FBI were asking. And uh, that's when I told. That's when I told them, you guys work for the FBI's, right? And they got very angry and they started beating me again. Wow. Same question the FBI asked. He says, what does the chef talk about there? Did the chef ever try to convince you to say things or to do things that's extreme? Or uh, the, the same question, same question that David asked. And that's when I told him, um, are you guys working with ABI or something? You know, and, uh, and 
he, he would get angry. He wanted to know the complete uh, foundation and, uh, and the, on the 14th, which is when I was released. They told me that um, uh, where I want to fly in. They told me, no, 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 you're going to, you have to leave. I asked him, leave what? He said, this is a political issue or something. I told him, where am I at? And the guy told me, you don't know where you're at? This, this is a different guy now. I told him, no, I don't know where you are. I'm at. He told me, you are in, in a secret service prison. I said, why am I here? He said, look, I can't answer this question. My job is just to get you a plane ticket and get you back home. He said, and then uh, it was in the evening around 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock or so. So they called me back in. Um, and he, this time the guy came very aggressively upset. And he said to me, what's up with you and your government? I said, what do you mean? He said, uh, the airline doesn't want to take you on the no-fly list. And that's when I really, uh, you know, accepted the fact that I'm on the no-fly list. I told him, really, I am? I told him, I didn't know that I was. You know, they threatened me with this in the past, so I guess this time they put me on the no-fly list. And he told me that they are going to try to do the best that I can to push me into the plane, whether I like it or not, um, but I have to leave tonight. Before they would, well, before they took me, I asked the guy, I told him, look, I just want to ask you this question. I told him. He told me, I'm sorry what happened here. Uh, just forgive us. I said, oh, no problem. You know, what can I do now? I said, no problem. I said, let me ask you a question. Though. He said, what? I told him, I got close to him like this. I whispered to him. I told him, was the FBI, did the FBI know they're on here? He said, yeah. Like, he's like, yeah. You know, like, he wasn't even shy to answer that. I asked ask him, when did they come? He told me they came the same day when the, when the, when the counselors uh, came to see you. And that's when I really, I was like, okay, so I know they were in that room then. Somebody was in that room. I'm just trying to, you know, get protected, you know, like I've been traumatized, I've been tortured, I don't know who's after me, I don't, and I don't know what the reason is, what people are trying to do, what they're trying to do to me, I, I'm just trying to stay safe, you know, no matter where I'm at, I need to be able to be safe, and, um, you know, um, obviously, um, they're trying to do something serious here, and, you know, my, my safety is the most important thing, you know, it was very disappointing, the government that I trust, the government that I hope that would protect me during a time of danger, let me down when I'm overseas, and then come to find out possibly they were the one who were actually orchestrating the whole event because um, there was cameras, you know, in front of me. They, I could see the camera light on, this, you know, and they were, it was connected to the computer. So they were trying to make me confess to things that I don't know and in order to be released, and uh, and only my government would probably benefit off of that. And so if, if they cannot guarantee my safety while I was overseas, and I don't feel safe, you know, with them or anywhere, to be honest with you, for that matter. And so um, 